I thought I'd give you an update on my project here. I think people will probably say, hey, you kind of half finished that. Well, I did. So uh, I definitely made a radio out of this thing. It could transmit and it, it could receive. But transmit and receive what? Well, I wanted to turn it into a telemetry uh, type of a radio. And so I've added the uh, DTMF tone output and DTM, uh, and, you know, encoder, decoder. And so uh, uh, I'll put a link down below in case you haven't seen this build. I think it was two or three episodes. Uh, this is using an SA818 uh, kind of radio on a chip, and it's, it's initializing it here. And then now we're receiving uh, a 21.125. Uh, and then this is the uh, all the built-in frequencies. So let's go over here to FRS1, which is uh, 462.5625. Uh, and um, I have my official Bao Fang over here. Okay, let's do a, trans, uh, a transmit receive test. So I'm going to be using my uh, my trusty Bao Fang, and I'm going to be using my secret IMSI channel, which is uh, Anyway, that's secret. <laughs> it's on a 440, 440 megahertz on the handband. Uh, so uh, I can do what I want uh, as long as I'm a legal, uh, legalized amateur radio operator with a license and all that good stuff, I guess. Uh, and this is all in the name of experimentation. So you're allowed to do almost anything at all on, on experimentation. Um, I'm kind of interested in that, especially on the 915 megahertz band. It seems like this is like 33 megahertz, 33 centimeters. I mean, it's kind of like wild man's land. I don't know. It seems like, I don't know. It seems like anybody can be there and the hams can be there. And it doesn't seem like there's power restrictions for the hams. And I don't know. It seems really weird. <laughs> so anyway, I got to find out more about that. But anyway, this is operating at, uh, 400, 420 megahertz, 421 megahertz. And, um, uh, which is, let me look at my handy dandy chart here. It's kind of, kind of way down at the bottom end of the band. Um, the, the 70 centimeter band is basically, you can transmit anything, anywhere, anywhere along the band. There are recommendations and stuff like that, but um, basically you can do anything anywhere. Um, so let me get, let me go to chat. I'm going to transmit and I'm going to push the test touchdowns. And you can see, there's one, two, three, one, two, three. So yeah. It works great, um, and uh, I uh, identified offline, so didn't give up my call sign. Anyway, uh, yeah, seems to work fine. There's a problem though with um, this TTGO. Uh, let me discuss that a bit. Um, so here is here's the pin. Let's see. Let's move this kind of slide out of the way here. Uh, here's the pinout for that particular device. And unfortunately, I'm using up some IO for the SPI um, display on it, which are some of these, I think. And then um, I need five lines for the decode. I need a key pressed and then four bits. So uh, right now I have it wired up. How do I have it wired up? I think it's uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, it's uh, I use this size. So I'm, I'm using these three here and 26, I think, either 25 or 26. Anyway, I was thinking of five of them. Um, if I want to then wire up the uh, encode, I need three more pins for the serial, and I've kind of run out. So I'm going to have to think about it a bit. I think what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll reuse these guys. Uh, I'll make them both input and output. So um, I need to figure out how to do that. I might put some resistors in here so I can, I can drive these lines and then also uh, make them into input. So in the program, you can, you can on the fly change things from input to output. And I might have to do that. I'm going to look around. I might have enough pens. I only need three. Um, I think I've got 
two here and maybe I can find another one. So, or maybe I can do double looting on one of the other ones too. Maybe, maybe the, maybe the, uh, I squared C is not being used and I could use one of those. Anyway, um, uh, my other videos just, uh, cover everything about, uh, wiring up the decode and encode that was done on a project. Yeah, here it is. Um, that was done on, on this project. So this project had the encode and decode all built in and I had enough pins on my, uh, my Arduino Nano. Uh, so uh, this one seems to be a little bit more pin limited than the Nano, which seems kind of strange. Maybe it's just because it, this one has some pins already taken up for the LAN and for the uh, for the SBI display. So I need to go back and look at that. But anyway, uh, it does work. The uh, the circuit, I won't even draw the circuit because it's, it's trivial to get the, the uh, audio into this chip. I was worried about levels and stuff, and all I had to do was uh, take the output of the uh, LM386 and bring it right over to the in pin of the, uh, uh, of the decoder. But in series, I have a capacitor, so I have it AC coupled, right? So I have a 10 microfarad capacitor hooked up to the output of, uh, of the uh, LM3386. Uh, so there you go. That's how I did it. And it, it certainly is a telemetry receiver now. It, it received telemetry in the form of DTMF. So um, that's great. Now I need to work on transmit and figure out the levels and stuff for the transmit. But at least, uh, at least receive is working, and that was the important part. And uh, feasibility study, uh, feasibility study is complete.